Hello everyone, Mike here. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. If you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, we are getting so close to the 1000 subscriber mark. If you could hit that subscribe button, that would be really, really awesome because it is going to be, I promise I'm going to do something huge for the 1000 subscriber things. And I just do uh, videos on pop culture, music, movies, games, TV, and everything in the pop culture sphere. Check out uh, all of my other videos, some of which are on screen now. And uh, speaking of my other video, video, my last video in which I said that we probably weren't going to get Diamond and Pearl remakes at the Pokemon Direct, uh, which I put out the day before the Direct, really didn't age well. Here are some of the comments that were left on the video. Anyway, my argument in that video was that I thought that the Pokemon company would probably go for more of a let's go approach rather than a traditional approach with the Diamond and Pearl remakes because that seems to be a brand they are still really pushing at the moment. And I was wrong. Totally admit I was stupidly wrong. In fact, like, <laughs> like the video looks so stupid now I even thought about deleting it. But of course, we got the reveal of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl for the Nint Nintendo Switch, the true remakes of Diamond and Pearl, which look really, really good. In fact, uh, I kind of thought that they would remake it just using the Sword and Shield engine, but it looks like it's almost, it, it's it's a much more like faithful recreation of Diamond and Pearl. Like it kind of has not necessarily that top down view, but it, it looks very much like how Diamond and Pearl would look in 3D. It's not the... Uh, sword and shield style of animation that we have seen, which is which is cool. It's a very faithful adaptation. I think it looks really great. And when I was watching the trailer for it, I was actually like, yeah, I, I think I want to pick this up. I didn't pick up sword and shield. I haven't picked up sun and moon. Like I never picked those up. The last ones I played were X and Y. Haven't played a generation of Pokemon for a while. I did play alpha, Ru uh, alpha Ruby, alpha Sapphire and Omega Ruby. That always confuses me. And uh, I really like them. So I am looking forward to picking these up. I think I'm going to go for Diamond, uh, but, you know, I don't know. I could change my mind when I see which Pokemon are exclusive to which. It looks like it's a pretty one-to-one -one remake. I would like to see a few more things added, a few, like, extra things, but I never actually played Diamond and Pearl either. I miss Diamond and Pearl and Black and White, so I've never played those, so this will be a totally new experience for me. I am so excited to pick up Turtwig, though, because he is actually one of my favourite Pokemon of all time, and I think that Turtwig... Turtwig and his line, and, and Gen 4 in general, I felt like the Gen 4 starters were really well designed and really felt like the Generation 1 starters in terms of their design aesthetics, I suppose. I love Turtwig. I think he is absolutely awesome and my absolute favorite, one of my favorite starters of all time, like up there with Squirtle. So I'm really keen to finally actually use him in a game. But of course, we didn't just get the Diamond and Pearl remakes announced. We also got something that I feel like old school fans like me have been kind of clamoring for for a very long time, which is this reveal of Pokemon Legends Arceus uh, that is seemingly this open world Pokemon game that looks kind of Breath of the Wild inspired and has you is set in the distant past in the Sinnoh region, which is obviously the Gen 4 region of Pokemon, where you essentially have to create the first ever Pokedex. Like you're making reports on the Pokemon you find and catching and going through the worlds. And the battles happen in like a real time kind of environment. Like it's still turn-based, but instead of like playing a transition scene, like you just sort of start a battle where you're standing, which I think is very cool. Like it just helps speed up the gameplay a bit. Like one of my biggest problems with the current Pokemon games is just how slow they feel, how mechanical it all feels. I just want it to feel really quick and you don't really not, so you don't really have to like be waiting much. Like I want animations that are very quick. I want a battle system that works very quickly and everything just happens fast. I don't want a really slow game. And I hope the Diamond and Pearl remake sort of stick true to that as well. But this is really cool. Like People have been asking for an open world Pokemon game for so long. And to me, like the reason I haven't played, you know, Sun and Moon and Sword and Shield is just because the Pokemon mechanics just feel so outdated to me. Like I, the, the, the core of it is incredible, but I just think I want something more now. Like I've kind of outgrown that, you know, up that standard RPG Pokemon style. And I will pick up Diamond and Pearl, as I said, and I hope I enjoy it, but I just think it's not like I've outgrown and would never play them. I just feel like every Pokemon game, I'm getting the same kind of thing. Just, you know, go out on a journey, catch Pokemon, beat the gym leaders, beat the Elite Four. That's your journey. Whereas this feels like something totally new, totally different, totally thought out as well. Like it seems like there is a genuine narrative and story here building. It's obviously based around Arceus and 
I also think it's really interesting that they changed up the starters to be like multi-generational starters. So you have Cyndaquil from Gen 2, Oshawott from Gen 5, and Rowlett from Gen 7. And that's just three really out there choices. Obviously, Rowlett and uh, and Oshawott make sense for the time because it's set in like a feudal Japan kind of setting, like Pokemon Japan. And um, Rowlett's final form is an archer and Oshawott's final form is a uh, samurai. So I think that makes sense. Cyndaquil still trying to find the relevance to that, but I really like what this game looks like. It did feel like the frame rates on a lot of the animations were really bad in the trailer they showed, but I think this is still a really early vision of the game that we're seeing. I hope the world is a bit more populated than it looks in, in this uh, in this trailer as well. This is a 2022 release, but I wouldn't be surprised if this ends up being like a late 2022 or even a 2023 release. And I wouldn't mind. I want this game to have as much effort into it as possible. I do fi- feel like Pokemon Legends might be a prototype to what um like the ninth generation of pokemon could be like do they implement some of the stuff they learn some of their learnings from uh pokemon legends and put it into gen 9 in terms of making a true open world pokemon rpg um as well as you know they implemented the wild area in sword and shield which was also kind of like taking those first steps into how do we do an open world pokemon game i think an open world pokemon game would just be amazing i think just set it in kanto and have the original 151 pokemon so you don't have to do all these 800 Pokemon. Like, if they do do a true open world Pokemon game, uh, it'd just be incredible. That's what I'm waiting for. Pokemon Legends definitely looks like it is heading in that direction, so it seems very cool. Um, But yeah, those are kind of my thoughts so far. I thought it was a great reveal of two games, and I was definitely wrong about the Diamond and Pearl things, but, you know, I'm happy to be wrong. I was just putting my opinion out there, and it was wrong. But yeah, those are my thoughts. What are your thoughts? What are you most looking forward to? Who do you start with? Turtwig, Chimchar, or um, the other one who is called Piplup, of course. Uh, and in Pokemon Legends, who would you start with? Would you start with Cyndaquil, Oshawott, or Rowlet? I reckon uh, part of me wants to start with Cyndaquil just because my first Pokemon games were Gen 2. So part of me wants to do that. Not sure though, might have to see. Uh, but yeah, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Check out some of my other vids. Give this video a thumbs up, comment. And uh, if you have anything to say, you can chat to me at radio.mike on Instagram as well. But until next time, my name's been Radio Mike and this has been The Inside of My Mind. Catch you later. But I went to run my hand through your hair and I noticed You were attached to string You were a puppet this whole time You were attached to string <laughs>